somewhere in this vast infinity, a life is about to begin. A chicken embryo 30 hours after fertilization. For the cells in this cradle, time is approaching for the birth of a new life. Stem cells, the progenitor of various blood cells, are also wobbling in this immensity. Thirty-five hours have passed. A groove appears, threading through the cells. A basic structuring is about to take place along the groove. Forty hours after fertilization. This is a colony of cells that mature as blood cells which eventually travel and permeate the whole organism. The passage of life evolves each time the blood cell meets other cells and various factors during its maturation. Let us follow them and observe for a while. Flat cells are changing their shape. They are rounder now. At this point, it is impossible to tell which cells will become erythrocytes, granulocytes, lymphocytes, or platelets. A notch where round cells cluster. This is where blood vessels will form. Blood cells and cells that will form blood vessels interact with each other as they are being molded. A cell approaches a dividing cell by extending its pseudopod. It seems that the cells inside the vascular lumen have begun the differentiation process toward red blood cells. A blood vessel extends. blood vessel has now grown to three. The cells are busy building blood vessels, vital for the transport of blood cells. 
What messages are the cells exchanging with each other? Though still very sparse, the blood cells have begun to flow. On the left of the screen, beating regularly, is an outline of the heart, gradually being formed. This pulsatile movement creates a rhythmic current of the still transparent blood cells. Organs come into existence, headed for ontogenesis. The flow of blood cells reaches out to the organs being created. As the blood vessels thread through all parts of the body, the blood cells begin to circulate incessantly to maintain the life of the organism. A transparent heart is slowly tinged with red. Perfusing all over the body, the blood cells contribute to preparing the internal environment of the organism. The vascular network is now increasingly red. The colonies of undifferentiated cells have now disappeared. The liver has prepared the environment for fostering blood cells. In humans, these hematopoietic loci develop from about the eighth week of gestation. After about six months, they gradually disappear as hematopoiesis is relocated to the bone marrow. In the liver and in the bone marrow, there is another important factor for the erythrocyte differentiation. It is the exposure to the hormone called erythropoietin. This developing kidney is said to secrete erythropoietin, which will then be transported to the hematopoietic locus. Next, BFUE, an immature cell, which later becomes an erythrocyte, was isolated from human bone marrow and cultured in the medium that contains a growth factor called interleukin-3. Erythropoietin is added to the culture. This erythropoietin has been produced by the latest technique of gene recombination. The erythropoietin gene is inserted into plasmid and put into cultured animal cell. And thus, the cell is made to manufacture erythropoietin, a true technological breakthrough.
Erythropoietin is a glycoprotein consisting of 165 amino acids and a large sugar chain. It is now possible to obtain this hormone through advanced genetic engineering technology instead of resorting to the kidney cells. Erythropoietin seems to stimulate the immature cells to divide and differentiate into erythrocytes. The cells are changing every moment. An aggregate of erythroblasts derived from BFUE is beginning to turn red. Erythropoietin activates the erythrocyte precursors to grow and develop into hemoglobin producing cells. This is an important part of the defense mechanism capable of responding immediately to critical situations such as acute blood loss. Bone marrow responsible for hematopoiesis. Various kinds of cells are tightly packed inside. Let us remove the hematopoietic tissue and observe the maturation of blood cells under the influence of erythropoietin in vitro. The cells that constitute the hematopoietic locus are called stroma cells. Marrow-derived hematopoietic stem cells are cultured over the stroma cells. The blood cells multiply. The blood cell in the hematopoietic locus has the shape of a leaf. By extending its tip, it looks as if it is clinging to the stroma cells for nourishment. On the upper left side of the screen is the nucleus of a stroma cell. In the cytoplasm, mitochondria and granules can be seen to move rapidly and have contacts with the blood cells. By transmitting some messages or substances to the blood cells, the stroma cells promote their growth and differentiation into red blood cells. The leaf-shaped blood cells are now more numerous and spherical. The exogenous erythropoietin has started to affect the cells. The interior of the rounder cells grows red. Stroma cells are equipped with a mechanism to control hematopoiesis to regulate the constant supply of erythrocytes to the bloodstream as required by the organism. Enucleation has begun. Defended and assisted by stroma cells, erythrocytes continue to mature. The life of erythrocytes is believed to conclude in 120 days. Numerous networks intertwine in hematopoiesis in order to replenish the necessary supply of erythrocytes. Let's take a look at enucleation with higher magnification.
On the left, the nucleus is trying to thrust out and separate from the cell. The struggle for transformation into red blood cells continues. Each day, new blood cells emerge in the bone marrow. An islet of erythroblasts in the bone marrow is another place where different generations of erythrocytes are found. The enucleated blood cells, now shaped like donuts, leave the site of hematopoiesis. The bloodstream abounds in fresh erythrocytes. Each one of these little lives supports the day-to-day -day functioning of the organism. The red stream flows engulfing the lives of diverse cells. 